scale of Kiel de Forest is pretty breathtaking. 250 square miles, making it the largest man-made forest in Northern Europe. It's been owned and managed by the Forestry Commission since the 1920s when the first trees were planted. And before that, it was open moorland, so in the last 80 or 90 years, the landscape has changed pretty dramatically. The foresters work full-time harvesting this timber, mostly Sitka spruce, working up to 10 hours a day felling trees. Max McLaughlin is their manager. How old are the trees that are being felled now? Well, these, these were planted in 1973. Just trying to do some quick maths. 30, 36 years old. They're incredibly tall. They, they, have, they, they grow very quickly. This is, this is one of the ideal environments for this species, which is Sitka spruce. Originally, Sitka comes from Western North America and it, in its natural environment. Yeah. And it grows in very similar conditions to what we have here, so mild conditions, quite wet. And on these sites, specifically here, where we've got quite a nice slope, so the drainage is good, yeah. um, they, they will grow very fast. So, yeah, 36 years old and it's, it's time for them to be felled. That's very impressive. And, and what will this timber be used for? It's, it's used for a number of um, products. We go from sort of carcassing uh, roof joists, so architect or structural type material, yeah. down through packaging, pallets, that type of thing, fencing materials, and down to pulp wood, which goes to make paper and, and card. The other guy in the background is uh, doing what looks like an incredibly skilled job. I'm so impressed with the machinery for starters because it's doing something. It is. Yes. Presumably hundreds of years ago would have taken a lot longer than this. Well, hundred, hundreds of years ago would have taken a considerable amount longer time. Weasel, the, the gentleman that's driving the machine, he's, yeah. been, he's been working in this type of environment on these type of machines for about 15 years. So he's built up a level of experience and it as you can see him working here, it looks like second nature. All the movements are smooth and everything he's been done is very efficient. Yeah. But it is, it's quite a complex task. He's assisted in the fact that this machine is very modern. It's bought within the last four months or so. And it's highly computer controlled. So all the measuring of the logs is, is measured by computer through the felling head. Um, but it still takes that skilled operator yeah. to, to move the crane and to make decisions based on timber quality as well. Even earlier, before it had actually even hit the ground, it was already being passed through, being being chopped up and, and all of the bark being taken off. Yeah. The bark's coming off at this time of year because the sap is rising. So as the tree moves through the felling head, because there's sap between the bark and the, the timber itself, it's, it's quite a, a slippy um, environment there. So as the tree moves through, the bark tends to slip off. If it was in the depths of winter when the sap isn't, rising, yeah. um, most of these stems would still have their bark on because the trees sort of in a dormant phase there, the sap isn't, isn't rising. It's quite hypnotic to watch, I can, sitting it, here, it, it watching is, the trees come it down. Is, it is, it is. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. One thing that really strikes me is the sheer isolation up here. Weasel can work for hours without seeing a single soul. Certainly not a job for everybody. What we've just seen is clear felling, which, as the name suggests, is where the harvester goes through and clears everything. But elsewhere in the forest, the trees are managed differently. We can see an example of that here. Max, how are the trees manage where we're standing now? Well, it's, it's a different approach, really. Um, the site we were on, on the clear felling, that's where, as you say, we, we take all the trees off. Yeah. Now, the major constraint on, on our management is tree stability, and that's to do with wind. So on the higher elevations, on the softer soils, if we were to thin, which is what we've done here, the trees would blow over. They just aren't that stable. At lower elevations, where we are now, we're lower down the hill, mm -hmm. we're on slightly better soils, the trees have a better rooting structure, so it gives us more opportunities. And one of the opportunities is if we thin, and we manage under what we call continuous cover uh, basis. We've thinned the trees, which is, we've removed a proportion, we've tried to favour the trees with the better crowns, and they produce more seed. And as you can see, we get plenty of regeneration coming through. Now, these trees have all grown naturally. They've come from seed in surrounding trees. And they colonised They've colonised this space because there's sufficient light to let them do that. But there's enough tree canopy. It's still maintaining forest conditions to give them the correct environment that they can grow in. So all this work that you're putting in here now, you're not going to see the results of. Presumably you'll be long since no. retired by oh, then. I'll be, I'll be turning up my toes long before the, the, the <laughs> Do you mind result. that, that you don't get to see no, it? No, because, no, because you can see the effects of work here already. We're still at an early stage, but you can see the regeneration. A uh, um, 70 years ago made a good decision and planted these trees here. They're the right trees for the site, and as we can see, they've grown well.
I hope that the decisions that I make in the management of a site like this will similarly be the right decision and then someone will come along behind me and inherit what will hopefully be a, a good stand of timber, a good stand of trees in the future. So no, it, it, it's not a problem. I'm in the heart of the great Kielder Forest, North Europe's largest man-made forest. And close by, surrounded by the trees, lies Europe's largest man-made lake, Kielder.